Hello builders, welcome back. Hopefully you're here for a structural video, a video about foundations and slab on grade details uh, because that's what we're going to be looking at. We're jumping right in uh, where I left off in the last video. So you could say this is part two or something, uh, but we were looking at this particular set of structural uh, drawings and this sheet right here is a foundation and slab on gray plan for area A. So this is area A of the building uh, right there in gray, the area that's highlighted. By the way, this is the Hollabird Academy and the city of Baltimore. Okay. In the last video, just to review, we, uh, we went around the building and we pointed out some different patterns that we were noticing to indicate that, uh, hey, there's going to be concrete uh, walls. There's going to be like a masonry wall right there, the CMU walls right there. So anyway, we looked at all of that, right? And then we looked at the schedules. These schedules here coincide with um, some of these markings right here. So we were able to cipher what those were and if you want to go back and look at that video you, you can do that and then come back to this one but uh to get on with this one i said i was going to look at some more of the details in um in, in more detail so that's what i'm going to do here now uh, this program lets me have a split screen so i'll be able to show you guys side by side uh the detail as i'm going through it uh on um, from the plans to the section so over here, we've got S-4.1H pulled up. That's the section. And um, we're going to look at this detail right here, E. All right, so we've got that pulled up now, nice and tight. And uh, I'm just going to go through these different elements and call things out, uh, working my way up, okay? Now, to orientate you, what this whole symbol is indicating is that we are slicing across the building and everything in the way uh, right here at this point, and then we're going to look this direction. So that's what we're looking at. We are looking at, we're, we're kind of standing um, below grade. We're looking at the foundation. Okay. And so we can look at this notation here for WF3 and see what the size of this element is. And it says right here, WF3 is three foot six and it is continuous, means it keeps on going along the whole perimeter of the building until it, you know, until it changes to a different wall footing. Uh, but it is one foot thick, so that's the thickness right there. That's one foot. And then this shows you the type of reinforcement that's in there. So you can see the rebar here. Uh, these dots indicate the rebar. Uh, that is coming straight at you and then you have what's called dowels. These are rebar. This is rebar as well But that L shape this part of it sticks up through the concrete So they they pour the concrete up into this point and then these dowels will stick up and the reason that will occur is so that the um, trade partners that come and do the reinforcement, tie the rebar, they can have something to tie it onto. So they're actually coming and tie that piece on, that piece, and that piece, uh, tie them on with ties, and it'll kind of look like a fence is the best way I can explain it, maybe a fence, you know? But um, this element right here is your footing. However, there wasn't a call out over here for what type of footing goes here. So the next thing you do from that point is you go over to your foundation and slab on grade notes and see if there's anything in here about the footing. And there is. Right here, number five says, top of footing elevation shall be two feet below the top of slab on grade elevation unless noted otherwise. Okay, so that's the top of slab on grade right there. And so it's saying two feet below, that's the two feet, you know, so we're on the right path. That's where the footing is starting. So that's what it's indicating right there. Now, in order to decipher how much, you know, because this break line right wow. here, the break line, um, you'll see this on drawings to indicate that they don't know how much, you know, inches, how many inches it's in between this. This could be shorter. That's why there's not, they're not giving you any dimensions besides that one there, uh, which we can reference up 
up there, I'm sure somewhere it says that this footing is one foot six. Uh, but the height of it is where you'll have to do your math. And so if you come over here for wall footing three, it says negative three foot four. Negative three foot four, so that's how far down, that's where that one starts. Similar to the dowels here, you have another piece of rebar dowel to match vertical reinforcing is going to stick up uh, through, you know, out of the concrete is going to stick up through there. And that will be somewhere for the trade partners that deal with the uh, reinforcement or the car rod busters. That's what we refer to them or they may refer to themselves as everybody knows them as rod busters. Those guys are going to be the ones uh, tying uh, these rebar together and they're just using uh, uh, wire wire to tie it together and then it's poured into concrete now one thing I want to note here you can see that there's a squiggly line right there as you zoom in what that's indicating is that before you pour the wall on top of this footing you need to rough up the area that's what that indicates roughing it up and that's just where you come through with uh, something and kind of scrape off a little bit of the top so that it's not so smooth and that makes it easier when you pour the concrete which is pretty uh, rough itself it'll have a rough surface for it to kind of bond to so that's what the purpose of that is so those are little things that you know you may you may see and look at and not even know that that's what's supposed to happen there all right, so we're moving on up. So now we have, what is this? It's calling this a 10 inch concrete core ICF wall. Now I'll explain ICF. Uh, that stands for insulated concrete forms. That's pretty much what you're looking at. And that, you know, you have the walls of the form right there and then your concrete is poured into them. And normally forms are used to hold concrete in place until it strengthens and then the forms are normally broken off except for when you have an ICF wall these forms stay in place and these are not um, wood this is made out of uh, insulated material like I said similar to like a Yeti cup it's not metal but you know it keeps it insulated like that but anyway um, they'll pour that into here and then you have this element that's called a keyway this keyway is for the slab to sit on. So we talked about the slab in the last video, but we know that it's a five inch slab. So that's the slab right there. That's what you see happening over here. And then this is the outside of the building. Over here, this is the outside of the building. And it even shows that there is a continuous mo strip. You'll see that on the architectural drawings. But what a mo strip is, if you don't know, and you may see this at um, on buildings, but a mo strip is for the landscapers and will keep it's kind of like a separation to protect uh, the grass and mud and all that sort of stuff from getting into the building right there I, I'm pretty sure that's the purpose of a mo strip all right now let's go back over here because there's more of this detail to look at so you see the dashed line right here that's this outside line of the footing and it's dashed because it's underground it indicates that right there uh, but then on top of that, directly on top of that footing is a four inch grouted CMU wall. Uh, you can't actually see the CMU wall. What you can see is this right here, which is just the masonry wall, just your face brick. Uh, but it's four inches and so is the CMU four inches. Um, so that's why they look about the same. Now there appears to be a six inch uh, CMU block in between those. Uh, for this for the brick to sit on maybe but I just wanted to show all of this to, sh to say that there are other things happening even below grade and then of course this will be you know it'll be backfilled with dirt and it'll make the surface all even again but uh, all of these things are happening below and the detail is what shows that all right Coming on down the line, and I'm just going to show this one last detail here because there's not a lot of variations. We kind of just picked the whole thing apart as far as the elements. But one thing I wanted to show is if we look at N, and let me find N. There's N right there. Um, 
you could see that all of a sudden in between here the all of the patterns that we picked up kind of stopped and that's because this is an opening a door opening so as a slicing across and you're looking you're not actually going to see a wall this time because the wall will be beyond this this is actually just like i said a door opening and it's still there's still a footing here that's indicated right there uh there is still a wall that the slab sits on but above the slab there's nothing because like i said that is an opening for a door or something like that okay well i think that um that may be enough information for one video uh, there are a lot of other details to look at here but i think that i broke it down for you in a way that you could probably look at these other details and the notes um, and uh, come up with some pretty good conclusions. But anyway, I will check you guys out next time. Peace out.